Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing as it helps out the channel and give this video a like if you do like it. Joining me today is my good friend from the Netherlands, my good friend Fox in a Fix. Say hi. Hi guys, I'm just back uh, from a holiday because uh, I, uh, I got homesick all the way. <laughs> yes, yes. So this is for Do Re Meow, released on the 14th of August 1948. It's the 531st in the series, and it's directed by Art Davis. Thankfully, you can find this on a few sets. I first encountered this on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume 4 DVD set. It's on the Platinum Collection Volume 2 set, and it's also on HBO Max. So, fairly easy to find, and thank goodness for that, because this one is my... It's your absolute favorite Looney Tunes cartoon. Yep, that's right. So, I'll just give you guys a brief synopsis, so in case you haven't seen this... Well, it's a masterpiece, as far as I'm concerned... But an extremely dumb cat, and I mean extremely <laughs> dumb cat, named Heathcliff and a smart bird named Louie are living together where, according to the master's will, Heathcliff will inherit his money first, and Louie is next in line after Heathcliff. So what does Louie do? Well, he does what any sensible parrot would do. Plot the demise of Heathcliff so he can get all that money. You know, it, it's sensible, isn't it? <laughs> it, it... Of course, hey... In terms of actual trivia, there's not really too much. This is going to be more about my feelings towards this cartoon, but the only reference that you guys might not be aware of is the book that Louis is reading, which is Rooster's Millions. That's just based off a book called Brewster's Millions, which involves a main character having to spend millions within a certain period of time, but with the catch of having no assets to show for it in order to inherit a larger sum. It was made into a film in 1985 uh, with Richard Pryor. So, yeah, give that one a go if you haven't seen that film. But we're not talking about that film. We're talking about this one. So I believe you have a question for me. Yeah, so why is this out of all cartoons that Bob Clampett did, that Chuck Jones did, why is this Art Davis cartoon your favorite Looney Tunes cartoon? Tell me. Okay. So, first of all, you know, I haven't seen them all. So the, there could be that slim chance that a cartoon may come around from after this one that may dethrone this and, and that would become my favorite. But right now it is my absolute favorite. And you know what? Sometimes there is no logical explanation why. I think for me, part of it is just the NX factor. Like, why is this one better than book review in, in my mind? Like, why do I enjoy that ever so slightly? I think it's mainly an X factor. Although... I think it's most likely because I love dumb, stupid cats, especially the Looney Tunes <laughs> ones. And this one is the, the stupidest cat I've ever seen in a cartoon, even stupider than Stimpy, uh, in my opinion. I mean, this cat, in one scene, literally forgets how to breathe and needs his friend Louie to remind him to breathe. Breathe, stupid, breathe! You forgot to breathe again! <sighs> Much better, Louie. Then I think that's what sold it for me. And that's not the only bit I love about it, but that's the bit where I was just like, wow. You know, the animation of this cat, the walk cycle, and even just the eyes in some scenes, it's just incredible. I mean, look, he's cracking a walnut where he's got the tool that you use. I don't know the name. You guys can tell me in the comments. I'm not going to bother looking it up. Um, he puts his head right between it. And I don't know, he's just, he's just so stupid. I mean, what are your thoughts on this cartoon, Fox? Well, uh, I think this one might be my top 20, top 10 favorite cartoons. And I figured out three reasons why I love it so much. Well, the first part is, of course, the story of this cat who is actually... When you leave him alone, he's actually already killing himself. But for some reason, <laughs> yes. uh, the, the parents uh, can manage to, to do it even uh, at the end. When he almost did it, for some reason, Heathcliff can't die. But when you leave him alone... You should think that he just stops breathing eventually, or he, he cracks his yes. head or something. But uh, so that's actually a very funny story gimmick. The second reason why this is so great is the animation. Uh, like you said, there are some points in this cartoon where characters have a very blank stare, 
and that's mostly in the in the first minute. It's always drawn by Emery Hawkins. He was always uh, the animator to do that. He had a lot of scenes in uh, What Makes Daffy Duck. When you see a, a scene with Daffy Duck having a blank stare, that's always uh, Emery Hawkins. For some reason, that was his that was his gimmick, and I think that's really funny. And uh, he re- can really make these characters look uh, very demented. So um, <laughs> exactly, makes them very insane. And uh, you know, and the third reason is the the attention to detail, like when Heathcliff uh, wrecks the train he uh, cries a little <laughs> bit but you can only see it when you uh, look real close he's uh, yes I noticed that. for some reason mm-hmm. very sad that he made a <laughs> made an accident i done a bad thing and also um, there's a part when uh, they are running and then there's a piano at the background you can actually hear a little bit of piano music for that part they didn't have to do that, but they did it, so I have props for that. Of course. You know, a few other bits I love about this one. Look, the, the dog. I mean, that, to me, is a great twist on that gag where the parrot you know, pays this dog, clearly in the business of punching up cats, I'm assuming. I don't know what <laughs> if this dog has a business or whatever, but anyway. And you, you, you'd expect the dog to make good work of this stupid cat, but no, no. Heathcliff just, <laughs> he's like, nah, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> it's just, it's just have have twist. And, and even the part where the cat is just sitting there trying to grab his thumb like <laughs> that, like that that just kills me every time i see it, it it's just so so stupid i just love it and we have to give credit to mel blank who's one of the greatest voice artists to ever do this like just a dumb guy voice i know my, our, our mutual friend Danny cruz loves doing the whole okay Lloyd type voice I, I know he does it on a regular basis when he buys a coffee and, and all that stuff i mean we all know that right <laughs> but what, 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 what are your thoughts on mel blank's uh, voice acting here well of course you know he uses this voice really often so it's not it's the voice itself is not spectacular but it just suits this cat so so well this might be the best use of the voice and like you said, the part with the uh, with grabbing his thumb, you know, it's just such attention to detail. They could have made him do anything, but uh, for some reason, I think Lloyd Turner or maybe Art Davis thought of this, and it's just perfect. Exactly. Then you got the William Tell overture playing in the background when he's like, hey, you want to play William Tell? And of course, all the arrows actually make it onto the apple. Or when Louis suggests, hey, let's play radio, which... I would imagine that might 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 have been cut on um, some viewings, maybe for children. It was. It, that, that part was actually cut, and I thought it was really violent. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, at least uh, we, we got a great uh, Mel Blanc spit song out of it. Were... <laughs> I can't do it, obviously. I'm, I, you know, that, that was awful. But I'm sure you understand what I mean. No, no, no. Play. You did. You did a good job. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe we should uh, practice that. But, you know, just to wind this one down, look, you know I'm going to give this one 10 out of 10. In fact, if I could give it 11, I'll give it 11. And it's my channel. I'm giving it 11. You know what? I'm going to give it an 11. It is a masterpiece. One of the greatest cartoons of all time, period. Not just Looney Tunes, but <laughs> of all time. It is magnificent. And I can't really foresee any Looney Tunes from here on that I haven't seen before dethroning this but man i watching this again i just got an absolute thrill out of it again i never get tired of this cartoon i really don't what would you rate this one and it better be 10 no i'm just kidding what, what would you rate it out of 10 well i uh, I, I just uh, watched this one again for uh, i i hadn't watched it in a while but you know i thought every joke hits so well and the animation is, is done so well so i think i'd give it a, a 9.5 out of 10 or something and, and how haven't we talked about the best part yet, the birthday cake? That's right. I thought we'd leave the best to last, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the wonderful gag. When I had my birthday recently, of course, a lot of people came forward and did the whole, you know, I'm not uh, four, I'm three. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't my birthday, Louie. Oh, yes, it is. Here, you light up. Oh, boy, it's pretty. Uh, hey, there's four candles here, and I'm only three. And the birth certificate. P- beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> just think. No one's birth certificate looks like that. I mean, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, wow. You know, I'm yeah, just... And, and, 
I, I, I just love uh, the ending in which uh, it seems like uh, Louis is gonna succeed in killing uh, Heathcliff, but um, at the very last part, somehow Heathcliff gets smart or something, and he's like, "Oh, I want this money. I, if I can't take it with me, I'll, I'll stay." Oh yeah. Yep, yeah, exactly right. But no, perfect cartoon. And if you want to know who animated what, there is a wonderful uh, Jerry Beck commentary as well on those uh, DVD sets I mentioned. Yeah, definitely give it a listen. Um, a few people have identified animators, and Jerry then just explains who animated what. So, wow, I'm so glad I reached this cartoon. And um, I guess it's all downhill from here. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> but we still got some great, but we still got some great stuff coming up. Obviously, you know, the Hunter trilogy and. Yeah, and there's the Dodgers, and there's the Rudy Larifa cartoons coming up. Oh yes, yes, and the Seven Arts cartoons. You know, <laughs> we're gonna love those, right? But in any case, we'll wrap this one up here. So thank you so much, guys, for listening. Feedback is always welcome, and until next time, take care. Going. <laughs> it's too bad you're going, Heathcliff. Because if you weren't going, you would inherit one million bucks. And you can't take it with you, you know. Uh, well, if I can't take it with me, I'm not going. <laughs>